we're hopeful that the Afghan security forces will play the major role in stopping the Taliban. And I know we, what we're seeing unfold is what we expected to unfold, increased pressure. The challenges will be huge. I wouldn't call it the end of the world for our people. I would say that uh, uh, it will be very challenging. And uh, that's why uh, I am of the opinion that the whole focus has to be on achieving peace. But this is not, this doesn't only take us, it takes the other side. Talking about Afghanistan there, uh, the press conference today with the Defense Secretary and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the first since the inauguration, uh, spending a lot of time about troops coming home and the concerns about that. Let's bring in our panel. Katie Pavlich, news editor, townhall.com. Amy Walter, national editor for the Cook Political Report. And Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. You know, Amy, the political impetus uh, for this is now solidified. You had a Republican president pushing for this, a Democratic president doing it. Uh, and the population in the U.S. Is, is for it, but there are concerns. Well, absolutely. And it's been pretty clear, even in these last few days, about just how challenging it's going to be for the Afghan security forces on the road to hold back the Taliban. The attacks have increased um, on the, from the Taliban onto Afghan forces. And we expect that that's going to continue. The real question, though, is whether this is going to be a launching pad for terrorism, as many are afraid, or whether the, uh, the threat for that is under control and that the focus instead should be on looking for signs of potential terrorist threats in other parts of the world or the other threats that we're seeing to the U.S. from other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Trey, um, Congressman Mike Waltz from Florida, Green Beret uh, in Congress, uh, made a good point in Lucas's piece earlier about the Afghanistan military bases uh, there being on the western flank of China and the southern flank of Russia and the eastern flank of Iran, um, and they won't be there in case those places uh, are in need or we need to respond to something in one of those countries. Yeah, Brad, I think the congressman was talking uh, hypothetically if there's a conflict uh, over Taiwan. I, look, I, reasonable minds differ on this. Uh, it's a complicated issue. But, Brad, it's been a long war, but unfortunately the war is not over. I, I get that there are people who are tired of fighting it, uh, but it is not over, and it won't be over in our lifetime. I, I can tell you, having served on the Intelligence Committee, I have no doubt that the United States will be able to gather intelligence even if we do withdraw. But I do have doubts on whether or not we'll be able to act on it. You know, the general referred to an over the horizon force. That's great, but it's not as good as an around the corner force. Um, I, I think we're going to be drugged back in uh, to conflict. The question is, how quick can we get there? Yeah. Uh, we did the story yesterday, Katie, about the, Jennifer Griffin did, about uh, Afghan interpreters who've been working with U.S. troops on the ground, almost 17,000 of them. Today, following up on that, a question to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Take a listen. Uh, interpreters and, and others that have worked closely uh, with the U.S. government, uh, the intent is with State Department and the lead is to make sure that it's a really a moral imperative that we take care of those that have worked closely with us uh, if, if their lives are in danger, et cetera. Uh, but I would also uh, caution some folks on some speculation here. It's a bit early to tell what the outcomes are going to be. Yeah, and this is to bring them to the U.S. or get them out of Afghanistan. Uh, but they're going to wait and see how the Afghan forces do. Well, yeah, and the big question for the interpreters is whether they'll be able to survive in the time period between the U.S. leaving and the Afghan government taking over and, and beating back the Taliban because their lives are in danger because they essentially worked with the, with what the Taliban thinks is the enemy and they were disloyal to um, their country and their tribes in doing that. But unfortunately, the interpreter backlog in the United States for interpreters who served in Afghanistan even 10 years ago or at the beginning of the war, 20 years ago at this point, uh, is years long, unfortunately. So I think that moral imperative is absolutely there, but whether the United States can follow through on that, because it's not just interpreters who worked with U.S. forces. They have to have been loyal interpreters, and of course, there has to be vetting of all those people uh, as well. But in terms of the question about leaving Afghanistan, I think it's really important to point out that uh, during the press conference today, they made it very clear that although we are taking U.S. troops 
out of that country. We are still going to be paying as American taxpayers for Afghanistan. You talked to Secretary Bob Gates last night, and he made this same point. He said when the Russians uh, were propping up the Afghan government, they were successful. Uh, but as soon as that the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, the Taliban essentially gained a lot more control. So the United States taxpayer is still going to be in Afghanistan funding the Afghan government, and they're hoping that they can keep the Taliban at bay. Yeah, that's always a big issue, too, when it gets to budget time about foreign aid and what that means and what the dollar amounts should be. Um, so this is one of those those efforts. The um, interesting thing, and I you know, used to cover the Pentagon, and when the defense secretary and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs uh, went out there, it was every day when we were back there in the middle of uh, the Afghan and, and Iraq wars. But this it was asked to the defense secretary, what is your top priority? Take a listen. Our top priority is to defend this nation and to protect our interests. And today, the most urgent challenge that we face is COVID-19. And so the department has stepped up to save American lives through vaccination. So, Amy, uh, that's clearly a, a mandate that comes from the top in this White House. That that is, yes, that the priority right now is for eradicating the threat of, of COVID. But obviously, in the next few months here, as we get more and more people with their double vaccinations, the threat is going to lessen. That doesn't mean that the other strains out there couldn't be problematic. But I think that uh, the bottom line is, the Biden administration has been very successful. At least voters see, Americans see that he's been very successful, has high approval ratings on the issue of tackling the COVID crisis. And so keeping that front and center is certainly helpful. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.